That brings us to item 15, our discussion agenda, the discussion of board policy KBE relations with parent organizations shown in exhibit F. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to talk uh, for uh, a, a bit this evening about policy KBE, uh, as you said, relations with parent organizations. Uh, this is something we've been taking a look at now for uh, over a year and uh, recognize that we need to make some uh, additions uh, to this uh, policy. The purpose of the policy, as stated uh, uh, before he gave you a copy of the existing policy, is to establish the basic structure for board and district relations with parent organizations. That's what this policy covers. And I have lifted out for uh, us this evening a couple of sentences which I think get at the heart of this particular policy. The board has final authority, and what we don't say there, but is true, you also have the final responsibility over money raised for school operations. Equipment donated to the school becomes property of the district. Money raised by nonprofit parent organizations for non-operational support activities and items will be managed by the parent organization in accordance with the South Carolina Solicitation of Charitable Funds Act, South Carolina Title 33, Chapter uh, 56. Uh, so as we look at this policy and have been studying it, uh, and one of the major prompts for it is making uh, sure that we are uh, spending our funds um, as they need to be spent across uh, all of our schools and for all groups of students. So basically one of the things we want to look at is strengthening the board's ability to document continued compliance with Title IX and other statutory requirements. Want to provide for the fiscal and legal accountability of all entities for which the district has legal responsibility. And to provide consistency in financial record keeping and reporting across all of these uh, organizations. Uh, going to the next slide, uh, what we're talking about here through a, an administrative rule that we will bring back to you for your consideration is uh, that we will be far more specific in terms of uh, the board and district's requirements for fundraising, for managing funds, and reporting all financial matters to the organization's membership and to uh, the district as well. Again, this is something that we've been taking a look at uh, for several months. We have um, put together uh, a proposed administrative rule and have been working somewhat internally with some of our staff members. And we know that uh, it has raised some questions because this will require uh, a, a different kind, well, will require reporting, which we may not have required uh, previously, and will require a different format uh, for reporting. And so uh, following much the same process that we followed with the calendar and with several other issues that we've dealt with, we want to make sure that we've involved uh, all of our publics in this discussion so that they are aware of what we're doing, why we're doing, and what the uh, implications are. And one of the key parts of this is the district will commit to provide technical assistance uh, to our parent organizations because many, uh, well, they're mainly operated by volunteers who may not have a lot of expertise in financial reporting. And uh, so we want to be able to help them provide the reports that we believe are necessary for you as a board to ensure that we are uh, continuing to plot, comply with all of the requirements of Title IX and all other statutory requirements. So here's the timeline we're proposing. Uh, we're, we're, we're operating under is that uh, beginning uh, the next few days we'll meet with representatives of parent groups, uh, certainly some of those that have raised questions about why we're making uh, this particular, uh, why we're proposing this addition. And we will certainly take it to our superintendent's parent advisory cabinet when they meet on February 9th. This will be their, uh, their main item for their agenda. And then we'll bring it back to you on February 22nd uh, for discussion reading uh, with the, uh, for the administrative rule and then walking it through the process and hopefully securing your final uh, approval 
uh, at April on April 11th, and this uh, would go into effect for the next school year. So we wanted you to know what we're working on and who we're meeting with and what we're talking about. And again, following a, a process that's worked well for us in other areas, making sure we're taking the time to involve our publics in it to make sure they know what we're presenting before they hear about it cold. So uh, if you have any questions of me at this time, I'll be happy to answer them. Anyone have any questions? Sounds like a great process and it involves again the community that we serve. So thank you, Dr. Hebner. Thank you. <clears throat> and that will bring us to item number 16, which are the proposed capital budget, capital project budgets for 16, 2016, 2017. Exhibit G. Go back to uh, Mr. Richardson. Thank you once again, Dr. Hefner, members of the board. Uh, this is our continuation of our five-year capital plan, um, initially approved last year. And obviously we're updating, which will now become year number one. Uh, but in Exhibit G, uh, there's a, excuse me, the uh, proposed budget is in Exhibit G. But so I kind of want to let you know what this is. It's, it's the, it's, this plan is designed to ensure that the district maintains all the physical plants while we're addressing all the other necessarily necessary equipment priorities. Um, the established priorities include necessary roof replacements, HVAC, system replacements, technology, activity bus replacement, curriculum related um, renovations and funds for those items that pop up from time to time that we have no way of planning for. The, uh, the calendar this year, what, what I'm trying to do is, is do this a little bit earlier than we've done in the past, but um, if you bear with me for just a second, uh, the, the idea here is for us to have, obviously, the discussion reading tonight and have our, our first reading on February the 8th and our final reading on February 22nd. And what this does is afford us the opportunity to be able to sell bonds early in the spring rather than waiting to the following fall so we have the funds available to begin uh, a majority of the work which starts over the summer. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, if we, if we can do that, we'll also have the resolution to be approved at that same board meeting. So that'll allow us to probably in March to be able to sell bonds and have, like I said, the funds on hand. But this is just a continuation and an update of the five-year capital plan that we presented last year. Uh, the the the, the current proposal is uh, changed a little bit from last year. Uh, it's updated, you know, with more up-to-date information, obviously. But this does maintain the current millage rate of 52 and a half mills, and it assumes that we're going to have $10 million annually available to us. Uh, that, in a nutshell, is what we're presenting here. I'm going to ask Mr. Carl to come back up to the, well, he's already up here, but to come up to the uh, podium and discuss some of the changes that were showing as opposed to what we had presented last year. Good evening again. Um, like Mr. Richardson said, um, the, the five-year plan, of course, our intent is to, to keep it as similar as we can all the way through the five years. Uh, every year, depending on what we're proposing that may cause it to change slightly, uh, we may get some better information on pricing. We'll adjust those slightly. But, uh, but uh, our intent is to keep this as, as consistent as we possibly can. Um, if you look at um, column number, uh, or the, the first column, the column that's in gray, of course, that's, that's the budget for, that we're con currently working in right now. The next column over, the proposed, um, if you start with, uh, with item number, uh, it would be on line number two at the top. Uh, what we're proposing there is the construction of a parking lot at, at uh, Chapin Elementary School. There was an original idea to put a gravel lot in front of the school, but after our nice bond referendum project, that's probably not the first impression we want up there. So this is to, to formalize a, a nice parking lot that will, that will complement what we've done with the, with the bond referendum. Um, next item down, that will begin the first phase of HVAC replacements at Lake Marie Elementary School uh, like we began at River Springs this summer. Next item down, or next two items down uh, at River Springs, 
that will be phase two and three at River Springs and will completely replace the HVAC systems at River Springs Elementary School. Uh, coming down a little farther, Seven Oaks Elementary. Um, we were not able to replace all the roofs at Seven Oaks uh, with the bond referendum. And if we had these three roofs we're talking about here, we would have prematurely replaced those, those roofs that still had life left in them. So this is to complete roofing replacement at Seven Oaks Elementary. And with, the, with this, we'll essentially have brand new roofs at the school. Um, coming down a little bit farther to Chapin Intermediate. What we're proposing with this project, um, we've got congestion problems getting in and out of Chapin Elementary uh, off the main road. Uh, we also have some challenges with uh, keeping uh, parent traffic moving well to, to pick up and drop children off in front of the school. This will add a uh, drop-off pickup lane um, right at the school location from the back parking lot uh, to, the, to the front of the school. It will also do a little bit of widening at that front entrance off the, uh, off the main road at Chapin, Chapin Intermediate. Uh, if you go to page two, and that would start on line 41, you'll see at Chapin High School. Um, a lot of people don't, don't know that this even exists at Chapin, at Chapin High School. It's in the fine arts um, facility um, at the extreme corner of the building facing Columbia, Columbia Avenue, and there's a theater in there. Um, what we're proposing is to upgrade that theater. Uh, it's, it's, it, really, it really needs some tender love and care, uh, not only from the, the seating area, the finishes within the theater, the lighting systems, the uh, control booth, everything that goes into that theater need, needs upgrading, and that's what we're proposing there. If you come down a little bit farther at Dutch Fork High School, their theater also needs some attention. Um, a few years ago, we did a capital project that addressed a lot of the aesthetics in the, in the theater, uh, cosmetic stuff, painting, sound panels, those type things. But what has not been addressed is a lot of your theatrical th um, aspects of the theater, uh, from the lighting system, the sound system, audiovisual, the rigging system, all those kinds of things at Dutch Fork High School. If you come down a little bit farther at Irmo High, um, you'll see reno a proposal to renovate restrooms in our, in our West Wing. Um, of course, the bond accomplished a lot at Dermo High School. Um, beautiful <coughs> theater. Uh, we did have some of the interior areas of the school renovated. A lot of the West Wing, however, remains um, as it has been for years and, and, and needs that same kind of attention. And our restrooms are one of the biggest things in the West Wing. So this project would go in, totally upgrade the restrooms, bring them into ADA compliance, uh, do all the things to provide the kind of facilities um, that all our students should, should expect throughout the district. Coming a little bit farther down, uh, this is a, uh, a, project, a pro project proposal for our, our animal sciences at, uh, at, at the Career and Technical Sci Sciences Center, um, not too far away from where we are tonight. And then uh, if we come down to line item 65, that is for some uh, safety and security needs in the district. A lot of that is uh, radio, handheld radio systems for the schools, as well as a lot of uh, camera uh, upgrades. We have, our camera system is extensive throughout the district, but it, it needs some tender loving care too, and, and a few added in a few key locations. Um, the majority of what we're proposing for this year is very similar to what you saw uh, last year with our other line items, but I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have on any of this as I'm, as I'm able. I first recognize Ms. Loveless and Ms. Bumgardner and Ms. Hammond. Ms. Loveless. I've actually got a couple of questions, but I'll rotate it. First of all, I want to thank you for the parking lot at Chapin Elementary, because <laughs> uh, I've been in the mud quite a bit in the last yes, few weeks, and I'm assuming that's where it's going. It's going to be at the, the top level. That is the plan. Yes. Um, will you uh, explain to us the upgrade on the drama theater at Chapin? Because that's a pretty small room. So, I mean, how many people are, do you think will be they'll be able to sit seat? once this has been upgraded. I actually have that, if I can find it in here. 
Um, it's somewhere between um, 109 and 126 seats. So that's a big improvement on it, then, isn't it? I mean, that's because it's pretty small, right? It, you know, it really appears tiny in there right now. Um, but by the time they take all that stuff out of it. A lot of the stuff, and, it, okay. and I know this sounds silly, but when you walk into a black room, which that is right now, it just seems small. We won't be changing the footprint of the building at all, but there are some interior walls and things in there, and there's right. an office space that will come out to, that'll help give us uh, increased space in there. Because I was, I was just kind of concerned because I knew it looked very small. Yes, ma'am. And so it will seat around approximately 115 people. Let's Ish. say. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I'll let somebody else. Do you have some more? You can go ahead and Oh, ask I got it. some more. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you um, want a breather, we can do that, but you have the floor. Okay, and then also on the, the construction of the barn, can you tell me the, what that's going to consist of? Uh, yes, ma'am. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be a barn with a number of uh, stalls on either side, a center lane to pull trailers in to service the stalls. There'll be a wash rack inside. There's going to be a small restroom in it as well. Um, what kind of animals? Are we talking about horses okay, or, okay. you know, that's going to be in, in this or pigs, <laughs> you chickens? Know, I think I would need, probably need Kevin Sox to answer this question for me. I'm not <laughs> sure what exact animals we are, but I, I believe everything you, you talked about, it could accommodate. All right. Okay. Um, thank you for that one. Love if you want us to go on to. Yes, go away. I'm sorry. You know, I just happened to think those are great questions, and I know this is our uh, first look and discussion, but it'd probably be great if we could see a little bit of a schematic about the plans for the area at Chapin High School with the walls removed and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. that's something you could bring back. I yeah, in the barn, too. I think in the barn. I mean, obviously, there, yes, this has been a goal for a while to have that barn, but um, and it be, I thought it was a good mm -hmm. question. I forgot who I said was next. Was it Ms. Ms. Baumgartner? Okay. Um, Mr. Carlin, um, in the first column, I know that was the approved amount. I know that um, Oak Point Elementary, it didn't end up costing us 400000 That's correct. So uh, much less, thank you. <laughs> so uh, it... it um, kind of doesn't reflect is that just it goes into other projects and and it just kind of looks like we actually spent the, what you're seeing right here was was the approved budget mm -hmm. okay. exactly how you approved it last year and that's why we showed that previous column just so you could see the previous projects that had been done the amounts like mr um richardson was talking about is in the in the financial <coughs> Bum Gardner, if you look in the uh, capital report that I gave you earlier, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Oak Point, there's approximately $350,000 balance there. So it, it reflects the $51,000 we spent to actually repair Oak Point. Okay, thank you. And also on the um, drama theater. Yes, ma'am. Um, the <clears throat> fact that we are, are spending a um, significant amount of money on, on the existing drama theater, um, let's just, I'm an eternal optimist, and let's say we are at some point able to get a fine art center at Chapin, which is a dream that um, many of the people in the community have. This wouldn't negatively impact. I mean, a lot of times you think, well, if you're going to do this, that means you're not going to do that. But, you know, somewhere in the master plan where this could be, like, I know like in gyms, we have an auxiliary gym and a, an arena in many of our schools. Would this sort of be like that same purpose if we? Well, <laughs> again, like Mr. Richardson was saying, the, the plan right now we're proposing is not to expand out or do anything mm -hmm. with that existing space. But that existing space is, it, it needs some tender love and care to say, to say the least. Just to get the, the, the current function for mm -hmm. it and maybe okay. even some expanded ability in there mm -hmm. uh, to be used by, yeah. by the uh, the arts folks because it's it, yeah. there's just not a lot you can do with it right now. One of the things we heard from um, many members of the community and Dr. Ross was the fact that they needed a place for 
chorus concerts, orchestra concerts, those kind of things without trying to use some other facilities. So, <coughs> excuse me, we were trying to accommodate, uh, after meeting with Dr. Ross, we were trying to accommodate his ability to be able to do, it wouldn't be a large venue like we have at Irmo or anything, but it, you know, small venues for those kind of things. Ms. Hammond. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. she was in the queue. You're next. <laughs> Me? Maybe I'm blocked. Mine's quick. I think you said, Johnny, and I'm just going by what you said. I, mine's really quick. I, I really want to thank you for having the uh, renovation of the restrooms in West Wing at Irmo High because it's certainly a show place with our new Fine Arts Center, and there are areas of Irmo High that are, have been so neglected, and I'm just delighted that, that for the students' sake, yes, I've heard so often how much we needed to renovate the restrooms, and I just thank you that that's on there, and I certainly support it. Ms. Hutchison. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, well, I had I want to ask some questions about that uh, theater as well, but I, I do want to thank y'all for adding the phase one and phase two phase the different phases for the HVAC and the ceiling. I mean the roofing. I think that really does help clarify for the board members and also the public. Um, you know that it's it's not replacing the same old HVAC and and uh, roof each time. Um, when we're talking about replacing the HVAC, I noticed in one of our uh, buildings, I think it was perhaps Irmo High School, that, I think it is, that the, the, a new unit appeared to be set right at the edge as you look at the school. And I was wondering, you know, I'm not talking about wanting to spend more money, but when we're talking about adding new HVAC systems, can we re make a request to make the HVA systems, you know, in the middle of the roof or uh, the back end instead of, you know, as you drive by and we have these wonderful schools, the thing you see is the HVAC unit. I don't know if that's a possibility, if it costs a whole lot more money, but I'd like for you to take a look at, at the feasibility and get back with us on that. Okay. And um, I have questions also about the the theater, um, Echo and uh, Ms. Lovelace and Miss um, um, Bumgarner, I, it, it, they need some, they, Irma, I mean, Chapin High School, and I'm here to advocate that they certainly do need um, facilities for their drama, the choral, all the performing arts. 109, 115 seats does not seem at all adequate and for us to spend a half a million dollars, I, I feel like that's not necessarily good use of our money um, when that's all you're getting because if you're only talking about, say, 50 students performing, two parents, and that's it. And I would imagine, and that's all that it could fit. You know, forget siblings or grandparents. So is this something that the school asked for I feel like there needs to be more study. I, I'm not real comfortable for us to do this when I don't think that it's, necess it's, it's enough for Chapin High School. And I hate for us to spend that much money for something that really is just barely getting by. So can you tell me it, what conversations you've had or can perhaps at the next meeting we can have um, Dr. Ross and some of the others come talk to us about um, what their interests and in, in how this how this will really meet the needs of Chapin High School. So I, I think that's, we, we want to do what's absolutely best for Chapin High School. I'm not sure Ms. Hutchinson's finished. Are you finished? Yes, thank you. Okay. And, and before you, uh, is it on the same subject? Yes. Okay. Ms. Talkalong, I got you. Go ahead. I'm coming back. Subject. It's the same subject. Go ahead. Okay. okay. I, I was just going to ask Dr. Hefner. I mean, can you not, I mean, if y'all presented this, can y'all not answer those questions tonight? Uh, I'm not able to answer the question about the, the Chapin um, uh, Theater. I don't know if I can, I can try to respond. What's that now? I said I can try to respond, okay. or as best I can. We have met with Dr. Ross. He asked us to come up and take a look at that whole, I didn't even know it existed, and I've been in a fine arts um, building numerous times because I have a child in the band there. I didn't even know it existed. Um, it's pretty deplorable, quite frankly, when you walk in this room where you don't have any seating. 
Um, they have to do plays on a floor um, with risers, basically where parents have to just sit on the floor, I think, to watch it. Uh, it's got some, it's got an office space. It's got some kind of tree house thing. I don't even know what structure built in there that um, if we haven't torn it down, probably needs to come down. Um, but uh, anyway, they were looking for something um, in lieu of obviously a nice fine art center to be able to have performances. Uh, you know, the orchestra has complained for a while that they don't have anywhere to perform, uh, chorus, those kind of things. So, and of course, just have a decent place to have plays uh, with the drama club. So, that's what we were trying to address after sitting down with uh, Dr. Ross and and the and the drama teacher too, for that matter. Um, and just looking at all the various options, and we thought this was probably the most cost-effective way to do something without changing the footprint of the building and working within the confines of what we already have. I'm going to go to Mr. Haldemar, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. No, I just, I, I, I just needed to know what um, item number 66 is, school identified needs. What, what does that mean? You want me to take that one? Yes, sir. It's for, it's, it's for <laughs> basically anything stuff. that we get from schools, um, anywhere from flooring, carpet, uh, painting, um, just, you know. It's a miscellaneous area? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's but but it's anything that schools identify that they need, and we okay. try to accommodate through that. It used to be a, a big wish list in, in past years, so now we just sort of combine that and address them uh, as we can. <clears throat> Santa Claus. Hopefully they're needed items, not necessarily wants. <laughs> no. I, ho hopefully not Santa Claus. It's, uh, but as I understand it, that's that's our our set aside for uh, where we need carpet replacements or painting or something that sure, uh, sure. rather than being that specific in your capital budget mm -hmm. about room 102 new carpet. It's Come from well, that. you didn't see a picture of it, but if you could see the, the media center at Armo High School, you'd see one of the school identified needs that we've taken care of this year by uh, redoing the flooring in there. Okay. And I, going back, I think the request to have uh, someone from Chapin High talk about what utility they would get out of that space, I think that's a, a, good, a good suggestion. I, I've not had that conversation, so uh, I'd, I'd, I think that would be a good thing to do. Okay, I had two hands up before Mr. White, but I'm not sure if it's Ms. Hammond or Ms. Lovis. She was up first. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Ms. Lovis, were you up first? I'm I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to Ms. Hammond, Ms. Lovis, Mr. White. I'm looking over here. <laughs> so, I, I, I want to, um, just listening to your presentation and to the questions brought up by the board members, I certainly understand your, um, I think you're right to get the what is it they're getting out of it but I want to speak for a minute just as a teacher hearing what when you presented it it sounds like it's this space that's already there there's a great need for some type of classroom for these kids to present their plays for parents to come to be used for course and even though it isn't adequate as a fine arts center I understand your point but sometimes I'm seeing it a little different I see it as this space is available and it's deplorable and it can't be used really for anybody's good at this point, but it's there. And if we upgrade it, it's space immediately for these kids. So that's how I look at it. Now, it, that does seem high. I agree with Ms. Um, um, Byrne that it, it, it seems high, but it's not. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at the need for the kids. I mean, it's for I, I, no. Hutchinson. <laughs> I'm sorry, Beth. Anyway, my brain's on this. I'm just thinking of the kids that it could serve a need and a place. And I think if they came to us with it, I think they've looked at it. But I do think the board's question should be answered. I'm not trying to say that's not smart of us. And you're looking at the dollar. And I appreciate that. But I also am just saying when you are in a school and there's this space that these kids could be using, we certainly, I don't think the money is wasted on these kids immediately getting this facility upgraded that's already a room there, not having to build something and using what is there and making it usable. It seems crazy that it sits there and it's not adequate. So that's my two cents. Ms. Loveless. <clears throat> I agree with Ms. Hutchinson. It comes, um, I do think, you know, it, 
it is a really, really small room. And I'm just wondering if it could even have an orchestra performance in it. I, I just don't, I, you know, that bothers me. I think you could probably have a small drama in there, but I've gone to chorus concerts at Chapin High School and it pack a 700 seat church. So, you know, so I, I do worry about it. I do understand. I mean, I've been Chapin for many, many, many years and have fought for a fine arts center that, that I think that we need desperately to have. But um, I'd like to see the Fine Arts Center. But I mean, I can understand if we can go in and fix this thing up a little bit, but I just don't know if we're gonna, if it's gonna come, if it's gonna be what we think it's gonna be. Because I, I just don't think that you're gonna be able, I've been in that room. And I think that when you, I just don't know how you're gonna be able to put an orchestra in there with parents and be able, I think it'll blow their eardrums out, <laughs> you know, so I mean, but that's, but I do agree with Ms. Hutchison and I thank you because I do think we need to see the, the plans on this and, and, and go from there. Yes, ma'am. Mr. White. Um, I, I was going to suggest, um, I've not seen the room, but it sounds like y'all may have. But if you hadn't, and, I, and I, I don't have time to go look at it, I was just going to say maybe like the board has done on some occasions, for those that do have time, go look at it. But um, I, I know when we talked about um, there was a lot of push from Chapin to get a fine arts center. I, I think, Steve, you made the right recommendation to put it in our mo as a start. You know, our first fine arts center for a variety of reasons. But... Um, you know, it was interesting because we, a long time ago, we talked about having a central fine arts center and let all the clusters share it. And I think the principals came back and said um, they really they felt like it, they needed separate ones in each cluster just because transportation and other issues. But when we were at one of the evenings at the Irmo Fine Arts Center, I talked to the principal a little bit and I thought, well, gosh, this is really a wonderful facility. And it would be nice, you know, can all the other schools use this too. I was thinking in the short term and we just shake his head like this place stays booked. I mean it, it, was, it was almost like we got more than enough needs right here in this school in this cluster. So and I think Dr. Heffern you, you've indicated that, that you know while there may be a need for another referendum there's kind of some resistance at least in sort of your initial feeling out some different groups. So I think the reality is there's probably not going to be another referendum in the near term, and whatever they have, I mean, I think that's a legitimate question, but we ought to hear what could they use it for, and then um, is this a worthwhile investment, and maybe it's not an orchestra, you know, maybe it's drama, maybe it's mm -hmm. chorus, and how many kids can be there, but I think we all have to consider that whatever we do to that room, and it's like some of these other expenditures we talked about, these aren't two-year expenditures, they, they ought to be I don't know how long a renovation of a room for a drama, but I would assume that's at least 20 or 30 years. You, you know, if you if you once you come back and redo it, some of these buildings I assume we can use for 100 years. But but the reality is, I think we ought to assume there may not be any more referendums in the near term, and and what needs you're really me meeting, and, and and how long will this mm -hmm. space be? If we do renovate it, you know, can they meet those needs? Because I guess the option is you've already described it. Maybe they're in churches doing performances mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So how much can you bring back into the school knowing that we can't put a $12 million fine arts center there in the next two years? Thank you, Mr. White. Ms. Hutchison? Also, <clears throat> I just want to ask, and in the new arena, there is a, a stage. Now, certainly that, I don't know about the acoust acoustics in that area, but you certainly do have the size. And I'm wondering if you're able to put in some um, panels to make the acoustics a little bit better. If there's some way that we can use that space, since it's quite large, it's new, um, it would hold a lot of people, are, are there any, uh, any ways we can make that so that it would work for a drama or um, a performance? Not the best, you know, unfortunately it's not going to be as good as Irmo High School for right now. That would be our long-term goal. But I would think that space is would be better um, 
than the 150 seat <clears throat> space, and I, I have seen it. It's really small. We can look at that. Yes, okay. ma'am. Well, I, I will tell you that um, from personal experience, uh, having gone to see my daughter and several things that, that have taken place in the in the arena, uh, the, the acoustics isn't that great, but there's a, a lot of conflict on use of that facility. So we've actually had to go to churches or other places to have choral concerts or, or orchestra concerts in the past because of the lack of you only can have one thing going on. You can't have basketball practice and, and a concert going on. So that's that's part of the issue there, and I think that's why Dr. Ross wanted to look at uh, other options uh, with the space he already had available. And I'll just mention that the, the piece that you've seen, there's an actual whole other uh, room behind the wall there that would actually expand it in the interior to make it uh, a much larger venue than you currently see when you walk in. Um, it's space is right now that's used for storage basically. Ms. Bumgardner. <clears throat> I know that when when we had our um, bond referendum and we were looking at Chapin High School, one of the things when we um, were building the arena, our architects assured us that they were looking at the fact that there was going to be a stage area there so that our students would have a more a bigger place to perform and we talked a lot about acoustics and there was a lot of talk given to us about the um, advances made in acoustics to where gyms don't have the reverberation sound that we associate with the gyms and we were looking at that um, we knew there would be a lot of scheduling conflicts but um, that was a consideration and um, and it's something we were were told when we were approving the project. Remember those terms, Robert? <laughs> I can see you smiling. Yeah. I do. Well, obviously this has been some great discussion. <laughs> and we're going to have a great follow-up. And, and you know what? That's what this is all about. It's a process and a, and a great projection of how we keep our schools, keep improving our schools. And I agree with Mr. White. One of the things we have to think about, no matter what the project is, is the length of that duration of the improvement right. and, and where we go. So thank you for any other questions about the proposed? The and I want to make sure I'm square. You're looking for us to come back at our next meeting with uh, certainly more justification on the upgrade of the drama theater at Chapin High. And you also want more information on the uh, barn for the uh, center. You want to take mm -hmm. a look at that. And I, I believe you probably want to add to that the, the possibilities in the arena at Chapin High School and how that may be adapted a little more. I understand the scheduling thing. It's kind of like having uh, artificial surface uh, on a, a football field. It becomes a soccer field, football, uh, lacrosse, or whatever. But that that's a, the other piece of that right. we want to look at. So, did you have something else, Ms. Hutchinson? Exactly what I wanted. I knew you did. I can read you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything else from anyone? Great discussion. Thank you for uh, bringing the projects forward. Anything else you had, Mr. Carlin? No, sir. You don't want to uncover another item, do you, right now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was very good. I'm, I'm pleased that we're all so very concerned about the space and the cost and the ultimate use and the mm. length of that use. So it's, it's a good process. It's a great process. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Ms. Hutchison. I move that we adjourn. I'm looking down the line. I see Ms. Bumgardner. That's a unanimous group of hands up. Ms. Bumgarner seconds. All those in favor, don't raise your hand yet. I want to thank Chapin Middle School for having us here tonight and uh, putting some really great welcoming signs out for us. We do appreciate it. So thank you very much. All those in favor of a journey, please raise your hand. Thank you very much.